Hello, hello, and welcome to the Three Idiots in a Trench Coat podcast. I'm your host, Alan, otherwise known as the head. I'm Slam, the idiot with the arms. I am Evanon, the legs being crushed by two idiots. And today we are here to talk about one of our favorite fighting games, Your Only Move is Hustle, which we will, re we will be referring to as Yomi Hustle. So, in terms of terminology, one thing that is immediate and ever-looming in these fighting games is neutral. So, there are typically three states in a fighting game. There's your neutral, there's your disadvantage state, and then there's your advantage state. Neutral is when neither player has an advantage and are kind of just throwing out attacks to, like, poke at the opponent and get them to make a mistake. So... For you can also sake. use it to create an advantage state if you take enough time to prepare something specific. Well, yes, that's what I was just about to get mm -hmm. to. So, oh. for example, throwing projectiles on some characters is really nice. Because if you can't actually manage to land that one in a million projectile that hits them, they are in hit stun now. Hit stun means they cannot move or make an action, so you can suddenly swoop in for the kill and just absolutely slaughter them. And this would put them in what we call the disadvantage state, where they are getting not only comboed, but after they get not comboed, I don't know what I would call that. Freed. Freed. Because <laughs> Lord knows getting comboed in Yomi is a prison. It just holds you there forever. <laughs> it takes forever. Perfect reaction timing leads to perfect combos, and perfect combos last at least four hours. This is true. This is and true. sometimes it's it takes like um, it's oh, near no. impossible to get out some of some of the combos without um, burst, which we'll probably be going about over later. Yes, burst so. and directional input. So true. the only way to escape combos is burst and di directional input. Directional input can be done when you're in this disadvantaged state of being comboed to influence where the enemy's attacks are going to hit you. So, in Yomi's case, if you predict that an opponent is going to throw out a kick, and it will send you downwards, and they're going to combo off of that, you can adjust your directional input so that it actually sends you left. And then all of a sudden, it messes up their combo options, and they have to go for something completely different. Then, after you stop getting combo, you're still in your disadvantaged state. And a lot of characters are judged on how well they can get back into neutral. So when you're in your disadvantage state, you need to be careful. You need to be, you know, quick on your feet. You need to get in and out of the situation as it suits you, you know? So, for example, we're going to talk about our characters later. But if you're playing something like Ninja, you should have a projectile up. So that way you can substitute to it and it will get you completely out of the fight. We'll talk about that in specific later. But really quickly, I just need to go over advantage state, which is basically how well your character can play into the fact that your opponent is in disadvantage state, you know? So how well can you follow up and catch them in order to keep the combo going? And, you know, that kind of stuff. So in order to talk about Yomi, we're going to need to talk about games surrounding Yomi, as Yomi is an interesting hybrid between fighting game and turn-based game. So, can I get one of you two to just explain the basic knowledge of fighting games that applies to Yomi here? Fighting games are usually heavily reflex-based, where you have to move as quickly as possible, respond as quickly as possible. You'll always be limited by, you know, human limitations. So, in the situation of Yomi, every possible frame that you can take an action, you have 30 seconds or more to take that action leaving you with the most perfect possible outcomes for every single combo you can possibly make. Every attack, every response, every block, everything is perfectly timed. This does, however, lead to an entirely different dynamic when actually fighting, where you want to predict your opponent, you want to plan things out, cover more area, stuff like that, instead of trying to react as fast as possible and attack as fast as possible. It also leads to an entirely like, different mentality when going into the fight as well, leading to 
feeling a bit more like chess than it would be a traditional fighting game. Mm -hmm. Slam, did you have anything to say? Yeah, and you have like time to respond to um, your opponent, everything like that. Um, I, I will say, considering I do have pretty bad internet, and I've noticed with other fighting games, um, there's these things called rollback, like there's a thing called rollback netcode or input lag, um, which is what other fighting games um, use to just compensate for lag. Um, if uh, yeah, like it compensates for lag over the internet, and um, it, if you're like thousands of kilometers away, that's what happens compared to like um, if you were in the room in person. There's certainly going to be some sort of lag between that. So, other games use rollback or input lag to, you know, sort of delay the um, moves that both players use. That way, it's still like on a level playing field. But in Yomi, um, there's the timer. There's just no input lag. There's no rollback because the timer's there. You have time to decide, and it really adds to it, honestly. <laughs> The most perfect possible outcome for any fighting game. No lag, perfect reflex time, everything runs super smoothly. So, and I can least... play it on bad internet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. So, as these two have described, Yomi is a game merging these amazing parts of having a turn-based game to having a fighting game together into one beautiful hybrid. So, to add to what oh. they're saying here, fighting games... Turn-based. What did I say? Um, sorry, gotta add something. Turn-based. Right. I don't think we went over that, did we? Oh, no, we, we didn't. We're expecting but... Slam to go over that, because that's what we started this discussion <laughs> with. Hey, shh, shh. Cut that out, Finn. Cut that out. The arms are flailing. <laughs> they're they're eager to say something, you know, just like I was, I was with the hands, just talking in the hands. Um, Leak now, nerd. Tell us about your turn-based games. Ben, cut to All right, cut to all here. right. So, to add context what? to what... <laughs> cut God to here it. instead, I lied. <laughs> okay, three, two, one, cut. So, to add what, to what these two said, Yomi is a fighting game, but every move is decided on a 30-second chess timer. So basically, you have 30 seconds to decide or predict the enemy move and retaliate with your own. And this leads into what both of them were saying. So now, what we're going to discuss is some basic terminology around fighting games. So basic terminology out of the way, I think it's time we get off this stingy main menu and into the actual game. Of course, we have all of this, the lovely, lovely settings that we're not going to be messing with today, because if you want to play the game for yourself, use this to customize your own experience. But mm -hmm. for now... It makes it a lot simpler or a lot harder. That's true, that's true. That's for sure. I'm sure turning on moon gravity would be very fun. <laughs> so, for now... We're just going to load in with two basic characters. So, first thing you notice when loading in... Uh, <laughs> oh, what's all this? Oh, it's fun, really. So, every character has a couple of different like categories worth of moves, right? Let's start with the simple, most basic one. Movement. Every character has some sort of movement option. Whether that be go forward, dash forward really fast, jump forward really fast or even a dash on, in Cowboy's case, right? These are your basic movement options. Every character's got them. Simple as that. It may look intimidating because, oh my goodness, there's a lot of options, but a lot of them are very basic, as you can probably see as what's happening now. This is what we call the predictor, and it's basically playing out what's about to happen before it even happens, right? So if I was in a match right now, and I'm starting up this game, I can look at this ninja and go, okay, what happens if he threw out a nunchuck? Would I be able to dodge it if I jumped? That kind of stuff, right? So for now, we'll just head back to this basic state. Next up, every character has it, defense. Defense constitutes your basic blocks, dodges, spot dodges, and the most important one of all, your hustle. 
I'll just show these off real quick. <laughs> Where we can see cowboys in specific, talking about our next mechanic now, gave him access, well, not gave him access, but charged his bar slightly. What is this bar? This is our super bar. Our super bar basically allows us to use our next category of moves, super moves. Right now, since the bars are uncharged and zero levels, it means we don't have access to any of them right now. But we have access to one, which is the bar just above the super bar. As you can see, super bar purple, our burst bar is blue. Burst is basically your get out of jail free card. So let me hit this guy with an attack really quick. Mm. <laughs> I would And then we hit him with the burst. It is a get out of jail free card, but it once used, it takes a while to charge up. Mm -hmm. So you can only use it every once in a while, so you gotta be very careful about it. But if we look over here on the left now, because I've hit the cowboy, we now have access to a store. We now have access to a super move. And this super move, you know, we just get it because our bar went up a little. It's as simple as that, really. So, our special attacks will vary from character to character, but generally these are your more character-specific type of moves, whereas your attack moves are your more generic punches, swipes, kicks, that kind of stuff, right? So, next up, of course, we have air options and free cancels, which you can see in the top right and top left, respectively. Free cancels are basically going to be these things that allow you to cancel out of your move very quickly. If I was committing to an attack right now, let's see this. It's really hard to pull up an example, but if you're committing to a move, you can cancel it with a move called with cancel, and that will let you go again. But meanwhile, you have air options, which basically limits your time in air. We're just going to have this guy wait. While I do this. So I've jumped, I'm gonna jump again, and I jump again. And with the second jump, you can see the air option went down by one. I jump once more, air option gone, and all of a sudden I don't have access to those movement skills anymore, do I? So it's really that simple, and that is most of the basic mechanics under wraps here. Do any of you two have anything to say? And nothing especially. I feel like movement is generally pretty understandable. Being able to jump is a pretty universal concept, I feel like. <laughs> Although super moves do have a lot of interesting interactions, though I feel like that would be a bit too advanced to talk about now. Mm -hmm. we will say um, that something that isn't as advanced, I'd say, would be block. I'd say that is um, sort of a, a simple mechanic. And it just basically lets you block attacks. True. That's about all it There does. is a high and low block I would like to mention, though. Oh, hey, look. Perfect time. I have a whip cancel. So, there's the whip cancel. cancel. It allows you to, to cancel your attack, but you can only respond with other attacking moves. So, I cancel my dive kick, and maybe now I go into like a sticky bomb. Oh! Let's let him land really quick. Meanwhile, this guy will So, now I'm going to have our cowboy here use block on the sticky bomb. So, as you can see, he explodes and he blocks it. That's Block basically just negates most attacks thrown at it, unless it has a guard break. So let's throw a... <laughs> Sorry, didn't mean to show that. So let's throw a guard break attack at our little ninja here while he's blocking. It breaks his guard. Just like that. So let's let our little ninja recover. Boop, 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 boop. When down on the ground, you can either get up or tech dodge. These are very important. But for now, we're just going to do a get up. Tech dodge basically just allows you to dodge off the ground. And get up just lets you stand up. So now we're just going to air dash, hit the ground, and show off another guard break attack. So. Should we guard break this poor ninja again? But the ninja does happen to correctly predict that you're about to. They can do what's called a parry. A parry is basically a block pulled at the perfect time that lets you get a huge advantage over your opponent. Like you can see right now. Well, it doesn't really... Oh. Do you want to go? It's okay. Oh. You're fine. 
Uh, well, it doesn't really have any unique effects on its own. It gives you an advantage on the same frame that it activates, which allows you to act significantly earlier than your opponent. Yeah, exactly. So because I've managed to parry what would normally break my guard, I have a huge amount of time where I can punish him. Just like that. So let's let our little boys reset. I'm naming our little cowboy John, and I'm naming our little ninja Jerry. <laughs> so, that is a basic breakdown of everything that has to do with everything. Push block is one thing we haven't talked about yet, but it's just block, but it pushes the opponent away and uses a level of your meter. It's, yeah, that's it. So, now, let's actually get into characters. So, right into our first character, we have the ninja, who I am going to be talking about. Ninja is a character that I would call a quote-unquote mix-up character. He's mostly defined by his ability of just getting in and getting out. So, let's show you an example here. So, let's say I want to just randomly get out of a fight. I'm going to throw a shuriken somewhere, doesn't matter, just for this example, I'm going to throw it behind me, and this guy's going to be like, oh, look at me, I'm being intimidated. I'm like, oh, I'm threatened. I substitute out, and all of a sudden, he's getting hit by the shuriken. Terrifying. I know. Really. Ninja is all about this kind of setup, where a lot of his projectiles allow him to immediately substitute to them in order to get in and out of a fight and use that to gain advantages whenever he wants them, right? So, for example, if I just, I don't know, if this other ninja was just spamming me with projectiles, like, oh, my goodness, look, there's a shirt. Oh. And I managed to actually set up my own projectile. <laughs> There's a shirt. Oh, yeah. If I managed to set up my own projectile, well, he's just spamming his. I don't know. Here we go. I can substitute into that projectile while he's in a weak position, maybe in the end of throwing another shuriken, and use the substitute to get in and punish him. I don't feel like that was a very good example, but you get what I'm talking about. I'm just using the background footage to help emphasize my point. <laughs> so, his whole thing is getting in and out, but how does that actually relate to other characters? <laughs> well, it's definitely known for having an quote-unquote annoying neutral as his whole thing is just being away from you and looking for that time to come in. It's really obnoxious because during that time to come in, <laughs> you're not touching him. But meanwhile, he's like, oh my goodness, summon. Shuriken. Grappling hook. Just a whole screen covered in projectiles. Nothing but. Only to then suddenly actually manage to hit you with one and then teleport in on you and just destroy you. Which is kind of just how Yomi goes. Honestly. There's a lot of kind of character with, characters with teleports. <laughs> Anyways. We won't go on too, too long, about it. but I'll see how long I can Almost go. every character works like that. You can go ahead and talk. I'll show off this. I believe most characters work like that functionally because each of them have their own ways of moving through the opponent's attacks and then attacking them directly. Kabo has teleport. Robot has uh, armor. Ninja has substitute. Wizard has a lot of aerial mobility. Mm -hmm. There's certainly a way to counter a ninja as well as every other character. And that would just be walking through all of its well prepared things and just hitting them. I'm, ninja, I'm saying it a lot it's... simpler than what it is, but um, it, that's just how it can be. Fighting a ninja is more than just getting done. through. One at a time here. Fighting, time, a, at first. fighting a ninja is more than just getting through his projectiles because of the substitute to begin with, because he can get out of a situation as much as he can get into it. Mm -hmm. The best thing for dealing with a ninja is not only getting in, but in a way that he doesn't expect, or by exploiting the substitute and attacking where you expect him to be. You 
expect him to teleport behind you with the shuriken that's right next to you. You attack the shuriken, and surprise, he teleported directly into your fist. Mm -hmm. I'd say it's easier said than done. Um, I'm not. I shouldn't simplify it that much, but sometimes it, you just have to predict predictions in Yomi, and sometimes it just leads to you whiffing at thin air because the ninja is just a... gonna hit you again. This game is a mind game of sorts. You're constantly playing against each other's intelligence and planning and scheming. Both of you have plans, and both of you want to stop the others. You just gotta prepare accordingly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, I just did a weird combo while these two talked in the background, but that basically sums up everything I want to say about Ninja, except for two things. So, I just very quickly need to talk about two moves in specific. One of them being a move called Backsway, which is deceptively simple. So if we use the move Backsway here on our little red guy, he dodges backwards. But in dodging backwards, now he has a whole new moveset. He can't use half of his moves. But the moves he can use are very good for just getting in and suddenly punishing. So for example, this Palm Strike... <laughs> Slams him right against the wall and has a really quick startup, so it's really hard to punish. Did you want to say anything, Slam? No, I just said ouch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is a very That's, That move has gotten me more than once. I'll just say that. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's that. But next up, we have Nunchuck, which you can see me using here. I will quick slash into a nunchuck hit, and now all of a sudden I have access to chuck jump, which is a nunchuck. would be a great opportunity to talk about stances. That's exactly what I'm talking about. So, chuck jump is an example of a stance based move where after you hit it, you gain a bunch of specific stance based moves, as my co host Ev just said. So, if I actually let my guys land, and then I hit a nunchuck. Bam. All of a sudden I have access to Nunchuck, Chuck Heavy, which is a move very specifically meant to only appear after you hit a Nunchuck attack, and Chuck Jump, which is one of my personal favorites, as it's an even. As you can see, if you can hit it well with good positioning, it just combos into itself. Over and over and over. Unless they burst your DI, of course. Yes, of course. Of course. But anyways, that about sums up what I wanted to talk about with Ninja, and I will let these other two passionate people go, starting with Slam on a Cowboy. Alright, Cowboy. So, it would be considered my main, but I might have a bit of less experience with the game compared to these two experts, um, the head and the legs. So, they'll probably correct me at some points. I'll say that. So, of course, the first the first attack cowboys always do is the the horizontal slash. <laughs> Just <laughs> it's got to be something with like the most um the least amount of frames where you can hit the opponent right on the first strike. The cowboy, honestly, is some sort of a rushdown character where you have to get up close and personal with the other opponent. And it's, sometimes, if it's something like wizard or ninja, you'll have to jump, rush, teleport, do whatever you can to get close to them, or else they'll they will <laughs> bomb you into oblivion. So, there are some teleportation moves that Cowboy has. In fact, I'd say there are three main ones where there is an insight. You can just... A foresight, where you can predict where you're going to do and just teleport there, or use it as a little attack in case if you want to... Yeah, shift and rift. So I would say Foresight is a somewhat of a weaker option to the super teleport because it takes one, two moves for it to actually take effect. But you can also attack while sh shifting. 
it's got to be something where I really like using it for that purpose alone. So as we can see here, that's what a rift looks like. I'm going to set up a second one here. I'm going to shift. Teleport and just attack? Yeah, that's something simple as that. And there also is something called impale, but it I would like to notice you see the little thing that says frame advantage right above the two lock-in things. If it's a high frame advantage, just like in the negative, it's not going to help you. The opponent can just easily counter you if you teleport behind them, and you won't get to do your move. That's what the average cowboy matchup looks like. <laughs> They're doing a little dance. <laughs> the dance of their people. <laughs> Alright, go ahead. It is a move that does break through blocks, so that is something to be... Um, yeah, it's a guard break. And let's see. there's another thing where if you attack, you can immediately... This is the main draw of Cowboy, where it's not just a blade that it can use. It's a Cowboy. It has gun. About six bullets each. So... If you draw, you can aim, shoot, and fire. So, just for example's sake, I have thrown out an attack, but I flipped the draw option. So now, after the attack, go. You can also aim the shot. It's not just a straightforward thing. And it does a ricochet. Anything else you'd like to talk about? Right. So, as I said earlier, it is a sort of rushdown character, and one of its supers really helps that point. It's called a thousand cuts, and once you go up very up close, because it it's useless from far away, it you can do you can start a huge combo. One iconic one that Ev loves to talk about is the cowboy walk. Where you do not hit your opponent, <laughs> you simply walk at them. <laughs> As you can see, it is quite effective. <laughs> it is horrible. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, Ev, anything you want to say? When it comes to dealing with Cowboy, there are ways to get around his, uh, little shenanigans. Most of his powerful attacks are all in melee range, and most of his range attacks are for covering areas that he can't normally reach. So as long as you stay outside of that range, most of his attacks are pretty helpless. And if you predict Impale, it is one of the slowest moves in the entire game. It will leave him completely exposed if you block or otherwise just avoid it or hit him first. When it comes to teleport, as helpful as it is to just walk past all of the projectiles, all of the things that they're preparing in front of them, it has the same timing as a movement skill, which means your opponent, more than likely, will get time to react to your teleportation before you can take advantage of it fully. So dealing with Cowboy involves a whole lot of figuring out what he can do, and keeping out of range of all of his options to kind of force him into either a neutral or disadvantaged state as long as you keep your range and mobility. I will say, again, the range is not a good thing for Cowboy because you do have to chase the opponent down to do your stronger moves. But there are some moves, as de demonstrated by Alan here, where... Something such as gun throw. <laughs> uh, Sorry, sharp uh, interruption. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, go on. Go on, go on. I'm losing my shit over the replay. <laughs> Three, two, one, go again. Um. Where was I? <laughs> uh, about gun throwing lasso. 
gun throw. <laughs> right, right. So, gun throw. It is... I'd say there's some moves where they're a bit more unpredictable than, say, something such as a singular projectile, a bullet, which a cowboy is... It's strange that a bullet is one of its weakest moves. But the gun does have its uses, where you can throw it, you can um, kind of bind your opponent to just a, cer a certain area. So if they're already in range, they can't, can't really go farther further without being like, like a bit worried about getting hit by the gun being dragged back into your range. So there's once you just have a bit of m movement, that way you can position the gun to actually hit your thing. I'd say it's one of the more useful moves, in my opinion, that Cowboy has for ranged. Again, not fully ranged, but it definitely is out there. Yeah. And for closer range, there's also Lasso. Something where you can literally suplex your opponents to the ground. As powerful as Gunther can be, it does have its weaknesses, like having very limited uh, aiming options. Your ability to aim is pretty strict. You only really have three options, and even then they move in pretty predictable patterns. Even without using the predictions themselves, you generally know where the gun is. Probably I'd say to, you know, that is where teleport out. comes in. Teleport will be handy in this situation, but there is because... still this advantage of they can react to you, and the gun will still have to catch up with you, which takes time. Um, the amount of time it takes for the gun throw to actually land a hit usually uh, leads to more of a disadvantage, if anything, as long as you don't use them in perfect situations that will either add pressure or combo potential. I'm just insert cricket sounds. Showing examples in the B-roll footage here. Anything else you want to talk about here, Slam? No, teleport actually can use the gun throw to like its best ability because you can teleport. You can also like predict, and it's it's sort of like a preparation thing, something similar to ninja in everything is preparation, but it's a bit more close range. Honestly, I'm have to agree with so you. I wouldn't say it's useless once it's out because. Sorry, sorry, you uh, lagged out. I'm sorry. I'm gonna have to agree. I wasn't saying it's useless. I'm saying there are disadvantages to it. Every attack and option has of advantages course. and disadvantages. Nothing works perfectly in every situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just the nature of the game. We play. So, is that all, Sam? Yeah. Yep. I know. Go back to the main menu and get ready for our next section, which is wizard. <laughs> Dramatic. <laughs> oh God. Wizard is a bit more complex than a lot of the other characters, but this comes to his advantage as that only makes it harder to predict the options that he can pick from. Most of Wizard's attacks interact with each other in various ways, as opposed to altering them with just a toggle to make them change in small ways. But with when it comes to his attacks, he has a lot of things going on. Wizard is known as a zoner character, which means he can kind of control certain areas with things like projectiles, area of effect, uh, mobility, and even controlling other opponents' projectiles or their own movement using wind. Generally, Wizard goes out of his way to control the battlefield as much as possible and make absolutely sure that no one can hit him, but he can hit everyone at all times. This comes in the form of, usually, his projectiles, as he's most known for. He doesn't have a lot of them, but their flexibility leads to them being used very extensively, mm -hmm. especially his quintessential 
bread and butter, the the sliced bread of his kit, the magic dart. He throws it, and it can exist in any direction at any time, and it will track your opponent. Now, you would think this would be immensely powerful for what it is, but unfortunately, the opponent usually has an incredibly large amount of time to block or even parry it if they time it well. But the dart isn't just for throwing at your opponent from across the map, as tempting as that can be. Magic dart is pressure. Your opponent has to pay attention to both the dart and you now. And if you throw a flame wave, which is a slower but longer lasting sort of projectile that hits them multiple times, now there's it's just an area on the map that they don't want to be in unless they want to be burned alive. So now you've already cut off several mobility options that they could possibly do. Like Cowboy, as mentioned previously, can rush in and attack the wizard. But if there's a flame wall in the way, you can't really dash forward very easily or even use many of your melee attacks in that kind of situation. You need to go around it first. So every tool in Wizard's Kit is slowing, pressuring, or otherwise bringing danger around your opponent as much as possible. And that's not even getting into how he can utilize these items as well. Magic Dart and Flame Wave and any opponent projectile even can be influenced by a move called Gust or Zephyr. Gust pushes in any direction you choose and can move projectiles with them. You want to move a projectile faster towards your enemy, you gust it towards them. You want to move one away from you, you gust it up or down, or otherwise just move it in a way that will not harm you. And if you really want to be clever, you can slow your own projectiles to mess with the opponent's uh, reflexes towards them. These sorts of interactions are a big reason that Wizard's Kid is so interesting for me, because Every situation, you can constantly change it and constantly remap every, everything that you're doing and prepare by covering your your opponents, all of their options. Although, of course, this isn't getting into the couple of the biggest parts of this kit. His three incredibly strong mobility moves. Hover, fall, fall and missile form. Hover allows you to stay in the air for an extended period of time and just float back and forth. You would th think that this wouldn't be very impactful, but it is incredibly strong, as many characters are limited in the air, unlike Wizard. So Wizard has a lot of control when he's in the air, as he can move as much as he pleases. And then there's the fall option, which allows him to uh, uh, fall but with increased speed, which can be used to catch an opponent off guard. It can be used to prepare a slow-moving attack and then only proc whenever they're near the opponent. Or it can be used to just avoid attacks entirely. These two are limited by the gravity meter, however, but it does recharge over time as it gets used. So you sh should be fine as long as you don't... Yeah, you know, overuse everything constantly. Mm -hmm. And then there's Missile Form. Missile Form is Wizard's get out of jail free card. It's his aggression card. Everything that Wizard can do can probably be complemented by Missile Form. Very simple. You use it, you point in a direction, and then you fire yourself in that direction at full speed. And boy, do you. Every part of this attack is a hitbox as well, so your opponent may have difficulty catching you out of it, which only makes it easier to get in or get out of a situation however you please. This is a big reason why Wizard is just rules over the sky in many matches. Then there is my personal favorite part of this kit, the orb. His special, like, unique thing about him. The orb acts individually of the wizard, which only makes his zoning strength even more immense. The amount of pressure you can put on your opponent by a separate character that you can control and attack individually 
to attack using your own attacks. If you throw a magic dart, your orb will also throw a slightly smaller magic dart. If you do a melee attack, your orb will also melee attack. The amount of pressure that you can use by putting them between you and your orb, both attacking at the same time, will make it nearly impossible for some people to get out without just constantly trying to run away in terror as they're being attacked by a 2v1 in this PV the 1v1 fighting game. Any comments so far? Mm hmm I'd say that the orb could be an extremely advanced version of, say, Rosalina and Luma from Smash, but a good counter for the orb is to simply avoid it. Um, not simply, of course, but it's, it's good to just have yourself fight only against one person, and if the wizard is busy trying to attack using the orb and themselves, it does give you a bit of um, just added time to... Um... choose a bit of an easier move. As if there, said there, is one theme, there is one thing where you can get really close to the wizard and be a bit like, you know, Eye of the Storm, but there is one move where if you're a bit too close, uh, it's you are in the storm still. Oh, let me just show it off uh, for you. Uh, as, you s as you said previously, getting away from the orb is much easier said than done because, as stated previously, you're not just fighting the orb. The wizard has incredibly strong ability and can and will chase you down. And even if you do get to a very large distance, that will only give wizard more opportunity to set up more projectiles and more walls to put you in between you and him making it harder for you to actually follow up with anything if your choice is to just run away until the orb runs down. Wizard will can and will take advantage of someone who will just run away constantly. Especially if he knows you're going to run away and sets up traps in front of you using these projectiles or cornering you to force you to engage with the now empowered wall of magic darts that are currently uh, approaching your location. Ah, I wouldn't say run away from the orb specifically. I'd say run towards the wizard and run away from the orb. Intriguing. Anyways, we'll move on from this. So, Ev, uh, concluding thoughts on wizard, just to wrap up this section. Wizard is a very advanced, very mobile zoner who can control the match to create an advantage. Perfect. All right. That's all we have to say about Wizard, aside from a collective moment of silence for every poor person who's had to play against a wizard and suffered. I hate a wizard. Allow us to take this moment of silence. Thank you. Rest in peace, all of the poor people who had to play against Wizard. Thanks. Your sanity will be missed. <laughs> Alright, moving on to the next one, we have Robot. So, just as a small disclaimer, good Mike Bach, by the way, uh, Robot is a character that basically none of us actually play. But, like, we play him sometimes, I think I play him, but most of us mm -hmm. don't actually main it, so we're just getting our personal opinions and limited knowledge on him. Uh, I think Slime has a story about this. Yeah, fun fact, but... Um, when I started playing Yomi, uh, uh, let's just say the 30 second timer is there for a reason, because our, my first ever match took well over an hour, could be going into two hours, and <laughs> I played Robot, my brother played <laughs> Wizard, and by the end of the experience, I didn't want to play Robot, I was tired of Wizard, so the only options left for me were Ninja and Cowboy. Uh, but I do have some knowledge of Robot just from trying to attack the wizard that kept on flying around the screen. Um, as Ev said, 
amateur wizards, right? Mm -hmm. Alright, so, going into a basic overview of the character. In the fighting game community, Robot would be what is considered a grappler. Grapplers are mostly known for low mobility, but doing insane amounts of damage. So, for example, if I just let this one attack hit... He's lost like a fifth of his HP already. <laughs> so, Robot's entire thing is getting in really close and just destroying the opponent. Like, actually mulching them. His whole thing is kind of... Although there... What? Go ahead, Ev. Although there is the very major weakness of how limited his attacks are when it comes to controlling where they go. You only have one option in one direction for each of these attacks right. that you need to set up for. Mm -hmm. His movements his movements are robotic in a way. Oh. 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 Short. Short. <laughs> On robot positioning is everything. You need to be able to position well in order to hit your opponent. Also, oh my goodness, I did not even know you can do this. This is why we did this podcast. Apparently, you can <laughs> yes. store the momentum on that attack. Okay, that's really cool. So, I'll just show a couple basic examples of his moves right now. As Ev will talk, do you have anything to say? Uh, not currently. Not currently. So, we're going to talk about a couple extra of his moves. So, one mm. particularly strong one. Whoa. Whoa. What is this hitbox? He's <laughs> <laughs> on the ground! He's getting caught in the air! <laughs> so, one particularly strong move is one called Try Catch, which is a command grab that, despite having a very specific hitbox, that should not grab people from the ground, <laughs> <laughs> ends up actually comboing into itself in niche scenarios. So you can hit three of these in a row and just chunk out half the opponent's HP. Mm -hmm. I've been tri-catch to oblivion where it, I lost four-fifths of my whole entire theme straight off the bat. <laughs> Some robot users are insane. They are very scary people. So, one particularly notable move is this called the Loic. It's basically an orbital strike that will rain on your opponent, but you can actually adjust its delay to choose when it comes down. But when it actually does come down, the opponent has one real option. Surprisingly, it's push block of all things. Push block will almost completely negate the attack. The only thing that will hit you afterwards is the fire, but it even negates the chip damage that you normally take. So, that's something interesting. Along with that, there is also another very interesting part of Robot's kit, which is Drive. Drive is this car that you saw me use earlier, which basically is his weird ground anti-air mobility. It's very confusing and very weird to use at times, as you can see. It kind of skirts you across the ground, gets you in for that big attack, right? It's very interesting to use, and some of his attacks can even transition directly into car mode off of them. So, for example, that one that I just threw out, bam, now I'm in car mode. It's really interesting. Any comments from either of you two? Uh, not yet. Nothing about the drive, but I would say there is one move where uh, the chainsaw, it does have a bit of leniency compared to the robot's other moves. This is true. Chainsaw is the only move, I think in the entire game, you can actually change what direction it will go during the attack. As you can see here, we have a start and an end thing, and if we adjust this, it will start in that direction. It will move to end in whatever direction it was also set. Really interesting. But outside it's of that... It's definitely a lenient move. Outside of that, there's only like two other mechanics we really need to talk about here. Which, well, actually, there's three. So, when Robot does actually land on the ground, like we will probably see shortly, if I stop the stack and then, like, I don't know, crash. As we will see, you can see he hits once, but then when he actually lands, it releases another shockwave. 
And this shockwave happens whenever he hits the ground from a big aerial distance and will launch the other opponent. Right? Another thing to complement this is flying. For some reason, Robot not only has four air options, he can also fly! <laughs> like, look at him! Sort of like Wizard. This is menacing! Especially because if he does catch up with you, boom, that is half your HP gone from one column, right? Like if that did actually hit, that would have just killed right there. Vacuum. Mm -hmm. Um, Ev, is there a difference between the robot's fly and the wizard's hover? The wizard's hover increases your momentum, in a way while also holding you in place in the air, while robots fly, while you can control what direction you go in, it's much slower and not very good for closing in or controlling the air. It's more so for gaining control in the air enough to position yourself for another attack, rather than wizard where you can do virtually anything uh, from the air. So it's for positioning rather than con Troll. Essentially, yes. You would not use the fly for many evasive maneuvers, I'll tell you that. It can be used for evasive maneuvers, but one particularly useful thing you can do on robot is play as a weird mobile zoner. Because, for example, if the opponent wants to challenge you in this state, they need to jump. If they jump, you can zone them with the fly in order to immediately punish that and then follow up with your combo. How is that zoning? This whole attack is a zone. Wouldn't that be a rushdown? No, no. Rushdown would be more considered running directly at the opponent. This is more Could considered be both. waiting for the opponent to make an offensive move and making sure they can't make that move. Keeping them out of your I'm being space. in the same position as them. I'm... Uh, we're not arguing. <laughs> uh, I mean, his fire field would definitely be a zoning thing, but I don't see his fly as being zoning so much as oh, stuff saying. that would be associated with it. Ah, yeah, the fire field. That, that definitely is a zoning thing. It just, you can not touch the ground or else you'll just start getting the burn damage, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm not so much saying that it is a zoning thing, I'm saying that it can be used to help with your zoning, right? It can be used along with other moves that cover big distance to zone. Oh, and then the note about Loic is that you can be knocked out of it, like you see here. So if you hit the opponent while it's going, bam. But anyways, besides the point, I think that's all we have to say about Robot for right now. Anything you two want to interject with? Hmm. Hmm. All I have to say, I am face first in dirt right now. Someone, uh, please help, I am suffocating. You were kicked in the legs because you are sturdy. <laughs> You're fine. I thought he was picked because he was wizard. I am losing poker to the worms. We, we don't talk about that. That stays between me and you. <laughs> Alright, moving on. Uh, so, our next section is the modding community. This game actually has a fairly active modding community, making all sorts of things, from joke characters, to anime characters, to characters taken straight from an old YouTube genre that I think Slam knows a bit more about. Care to tell us? Ah, uh, yeah, stick animations. So... Animators always have to start out somewhere, right? And this has been around since, like, the start of the internet, right? So, something like Shockwave Flash, there were a lot of games, animations made with it that they didn't make huge, full, fleshed-out bodies. They just made stick figures. But the main point of those animations was the fights. There's something of a subgenre of just people who still continue to use stick animations for games and animations. Um, some I could list off would be Animation versus Animator by Alan Becker, which is very, very awesome. 
um, just it, something comes to life in MS Paint and just starts wrecking the entire computer. Uh, very creative. There is something of uh, there's something very similar to Yomi Hustle in how there's like stick fight stick people going up against each other in an arena. Um, it is a flash game, actually. I'm pretty sure, if I remember correctly, it would be something called Rock Hard Coliseum. And as for animations, they can sometimes range with like eyes, facial expressions, additional accessories and stuff. It's not just limited to just a solid base color, like in Yomi, usually, because there are accents, I will say that. Yep. But... Something along the lines of Slush Invaders, or... Maybe the aforementioned Hard Rock Coliseum. Rock Hard Coliseum. Right. Now you have to be really. <laughs> so, how exactly do the right? Relate so, to sorry. Can you like just just that you can start here? Just right. Cut. Three, two, one. So there's 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 always going to be a place where these things kind of um, congregate or conglomerate, just merge into one singular website. And there was an old play, uh, place called Stick Page where it was just all stick animations and fights. And Yomi Hustle's like the modern equivalent to quite a few of those little flash games that were on there. So how does this actually tie into Yomi? I would say um, it. <laughs> there's quite a few mods that are from those old animations, actually. From what I've looked into, I have I have less experience in the modding community than Alan or Evan. But from what I've seen in the workshop, there's some familiar names that I just kind of brings a smile to me, honestly. And I'm sure that there there is at least some sort of inspiration for the art style, for the simplicity and beauty of the simplicity of it that comes from those old stick animations and fights that the developer for this game had. Mm -hmm. yeah, I believe the developer themselves said that they were terrible with art, but it didn't matter to them because as long as the game functioned the way that he wanted it to, it's just fine. It, it most certainly is. Oh yeah, it's more than just fine. So, stick fight characters exist a lot in the modding sphere of this game. Like, there is a lot of random stick fight OCs. But I don't think any of us will talk about them. But I do think me and Ev have picked out a character or two for a little modded spotlight. Uh, do you want to go first, Ev? Of course. Do both of these the one I'm bringing to the table is one simply named a Big Sword. You may think this means <laughs> that they are incredibly simple and only really just do slow at big attacks. But no, it's... It's weirdly complicated, despite being named Big Sword and having an attack called the. So Big Sword's whole shtick is that nearly every action requires another one to set it up. You can't just swing your weapon. You have to lift your weapon first in order to change your stance in order to perform an attack. On top of this, you no longer have a dodge. You cannot parry it at all. And you move about as uh, quickly as a brick being carried by a slug. However, you do have options to deal with this. For one, you have hyper armor, a concept where if you receive damage, you don't go into hit stun into the hyper armor on that. While it is limited, you have so much of it that is rarely an issue unless you are being absolutely pressured down. Secondly, your quintessential big sword has an incredibly impressive amount of range to it because of how large it is, if you could have guessed. Some disadvantages come with this, of course, like a character who is a little too fast can speed around big sword. But thankfully, there are a few extra options for this, such as summoning your own minion 
to pressure the opponent for you. While the minion has limited health and may even die instantly, the presence of it is enough to kind of put your opponent into a threatening situation. And if they're too far away from you, throwing projectiles from across the map, well, you have a friend that can teleport on top of them and keep them distracted while you close the distance. Additionally, while you don't have a dodge, you can dodge out of uh, lifting up your weapon. You would think that lifting it up would leave him vulnerable. That is a great mistake to make. Yeah, so I feel like that was unnecessary information. Yeah, but I'm going to move on to something more important. We'll we'll wrap it up for now. While you can see, he's very cool. I was going to mention like the biggest part of her kit, though, being a giant husk. I feel like it's kind of important not to leave that out. Uh, well, we'll you know why. We'll let the viewer discover that. One. <laughs> For now, we'll move on to our next mod of character spotlight. Yeah, yeah. I am running out of a bit of time, so we're going to go through this one nice and quick. My character that I bring to the table is simply called Proto Wolf. Now, he's a little <laughs> unfinished, <laughs> to say the least. He's a very, very basic state right now. But you can see, here he is. He's a little cutie. So, his entire thing is having two of him. Now, you can't see it right now, but if you look here, you see Sync and you see Fang. Currently, there are two clones here. You can see them split apart. If I hit Fang, for example, he will go forward, but I, the actual me, is not going forward. Its whole thing is deceiving your opponent into making them think you are the clone, only to use Stalk. Stalk is a move that makes you go invisible. Now this is extremely powerful in a game like this for multitudes of reasons, but the most simple is that it's really, really cool. I nerd out over this character every time I see him. <laughs> you have a right to, it looks amazing. I haven't seen this before. Yeah, as I said, he's fairly unfinished, but he is very, very cool. So we're gonna wrap it up right there, basically. Uh, not much to really say outside of the fact that he goes invisible and he comes out of invisibility. And it's really cool to see a mod like community build around this game and be this creative. I believe that's all we have to talk about today. So uh, let's all just very quickly give the game a rating out of ten. So we'll start with you. We'll start with you, Slam, aka Arms. What do you think? Well, um, I think that it got it actually was nominated for a Steam Award last year. So I I couldn't give it anything under a nine out of ten, honestly. Just how creative it is, right? Oh yeah, that was the uh, Labor of Love. Labor of Love is a big award, but anyways, besides the point. Was it? Well, yeah, I think hmm? it, we, won't, we won't drift too far off topic for now. But anyways, Ev, yeah. your rating? I'll give it an 9 out of 10. It is an outstanding game with a lot of genuinely fascinating mechanics. The only downside I can ever think of is how slow it can be sometimes to actually get a match going. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Personally, I give it a 7 out of 10. Would be a 10, but Wizard exists. Really? Ah, <laughs> uh, I see. Anyways. So, that's all for today's episode. If you people enjoyed, be sure to like, subscribe. If you didn't enjoy, just leave a negative comment. It'll still give me engagement. And if you did enjoy, be sure to stay around for our next episode, which will be Monster Hunter World. And if you're lucky, you'll see my spine be reduced to a bowl of cereal. <laughs> Uh, Stay tuned for more. Yeah, you better keep walking. We're going to the grocery store now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Get along. <laughs> <laughs> it would appear as if Ev might have collapsed, but we'll see you next time.